Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're going to be replacing a dry well and getting rid of the dry well because you'll see why um, as we go into the video. I've actually already started. This is actually at a friend of mine's property here in North Florida and um, I've done a lot of work for him out here, but he put in this dry well and it really, he did a great job, but as you'll see, dry wells, they really don't function. Um, in my opinion, okay? I know people say they do and this and that, but when you see this, you'll understand why, I hope. Let's go take a look at the excavation. So here's an example of a dry well, and it hasn't rained for several weeks, and you can see that water down in the bottom of that uh, pit. This is surrounded by gravel, and the guy says it goes down about two or three feet more of gravel underneath. And you can see the inlet line coming from a yard drain coming into the area. What he says is that during the big rains, of course, this doesn't work. And that makes perfect sense. This is the level of groundwater here in the yard. <laughs> so basically, we're going to go ahead and put a sump pump in here, but we're going to move this uh, over out of the way. So we started a new trench right along his property line, runs all the way down. And basically we're gonna put a sump basin right here and we'll send that out to the front, out to the street. But you can see, even as we started to dig, you see all that groundwater? So the sump pump is really important if you have a low spot. Um, the dry well, you know, it works and it doesn't work. Again, when groundwater fills up, so does your dry well, and water has no place to go. We're also attaching a driveway drain. He asked if we could put a, another drain by the driveway. That's what this line coming in is. So let's go ahead and excavate, clean out this trench, and we'll lay some. Pulling out an old sump basin or, you know, a dry well is not as easy as you think. <laughs> um, you got to dig all the way around it. You know, these things have barbs on the outside, little rivets help hold it down. I'm down there pretty deep. Of course, it's got lots of water. But suggest, this is SDR 35. It's a scheduled PVC. Nice, good stuff. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the saw saw. Cut this because it's really in the way unless you want to excavate all the way back to pull the pipe out. That pipe's perfect level. So we're going to actually put a catch basin where this is, a big 12 by 12, <clears throat> and continue the line, you know, over to the new trench over there. So let's go ahead and get the Sawzall and cut this pipe. <clears throat> I'm going to use a hacksaw with a good Lennox blade. doesn't have to be for metal or anything. Wood works great. So we can cut that out. Then We'll do a little bit more excavating, but I can get some leverage on this pit to pull it out. So after you do a little bit more excavation, if you just wiggle, remember there's a lot of water in here, but it will come up. It's trying to drain out of those holes down into that gravel, really heavy, but we'll get it up out of here and dump it. Oh, there's bricks down in the bottom of it too. <laughs> and of course it could drop back down in there, but we'll get it. Let's dump some of that water out. You hear those bricks they had down in it? I don't know why, but they did. Okay, so there's the where they had their dry well. And what we're gonna do is use some of the excess from our excavation um, all through here. We we'll use some of that excess and just backfill this as well as put some more gravel here to help it drain even more into our system. Um, we're gonna put a big catch space in here at grade because he wants to make this a driveway. It's going back uh, to an RV. So he wants to make this a driveway and come through. So. We're gonna run some more SDR 35 across the drive, and then we can switch over to corrugated or PVC, whatever. It doesn't make that much difference. Um, it's quite deep and very safe and secure at that level. So again, I've made a couple videos about dry wells. You know, this was a NDS flow well. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty dirty down there. And um, they, don't, they don't really work. <laughs> Maybe on a small application, but when you're gathering you know, thousands and thousands of gallons of water and trying to discharge it down into the ground, if that ground's full of water, it's, it's not going to happen. So, 
What we're doing, just a re review real quick. You saw me pull out the old Flowell basin, and they actually used a sump basin for it, but same thing. And then, of course, there's gravel underneath all that water. There's the level of groundwater. It has no place to go. When it rains hard, it, it tries to drain, but what it really does is just runs out through the ground. But as that groundwater rises, of course, it you know has no place to go. So we're going to put in a big catch basin right here and continue that line on around over to a new sump basin and pump it out to the To give you the example of, of groundwater, although you don't see it, listen carefully. Maybe you can see it now. Can you see that mud down there? This isn't even as deep as the original dry well. Groundwater is different levels all through your ground. So again, if you're gonna use a dry well, you're gonna to have to put in a whole lot of gravel. I think you're better off with a pump or gravity drain. So over here, just at the corner of his property, we're gonna go ahead and put in, we're gonna use that existing um, sump basin because it wasn't really a, a flow well basin. So it works great for the pump. And we're gonna take it, probably double it and go even deeper because the discharge line, if you can see, is, or the inlet line, excuse me, is very, very deep. And we need to make sure that the, the basin's deep enough to handle that as well. So this is a 12 by 12 catch basin. And you can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. Even Ace may have them as well. Um, these, are not, these are not cheap. These are about $80. And to be honest, they don't really function any different then a six by six. If you notice, the, out, the, the outlet or inlet is just three inch. So whether this was a giant, you know, big basin, you know, underneath of this or whatever, <laughs> all it's gonna do is fill up with water, but the outlet is still only three inch. But again, it works great for this application only because it's going to be at the right level so that there's not gonna be a big low spot when we set this back in that hole. To put this together, I've shown you this many times, it, it's great. It's got these little slits in it. By the way, this is a used one. Again, my friend's property, he's getting some good material, but it's been used, um, pulled it out of an old job. Anyways, it's got these slits in it that slide into these little holes, and you just twist and lock it in place. Real simple. But what I do like to do is put a couple of set screws in there. Excuse me, had a hangnail there. Um, Put a couple of set screws in here because this is going to be driven over on a driveway so i don't want this to come apart so a couple of set screws just to hold it in place to make sure same thing on the other side take the lid off <laughs> twist it in place and we'll put a couple more set screws here You just need a couple of them. And then you can see how the pipe's gonna fit in here. It slides right into the adapter. You could, you could run four inch, or excuse me, six inch around the outside, three inch on the inside, or four inch in between. Again, it's a three inch opening. So, you, you know, you figure that. <laughs> but it, it just fits tightly on there. And when we, when we put it on together, I'm going to put some more set screws in here as well to hold it all together. So there's your catch basin. Um, and it works really good. It picks up immediate surface water runoff. So immediate surface water runoff. So as water comes across the ground, drops into your basin, and is carried away by your system. Um, I think that you know the French drain works wonderfully. It, it does work great, but it is designed to pick up subsurface water, and that's the water we showed you, you know, in that hole over there. That's groundwater, subsurface water. As that water would rise up into your French drain, it would enter your pipe and be carried away. Um, so let's go ahead and keep on installing. A quick review. This was a dry well. It was a flow well, and here's your old lid that was on the top of it, and they used the sump basin as the liner to actually be the well of the water, and then about two feet of gravel underneath of that. But you can see the level of groundwater. So, and it hasn't rained for a couple weeks. <laughs> but groundwater in, in the southeast is 
always going to be high. I mean, yeah, there can be a drought, but there's always groundwater. Now, maybe up north, um, you could get away with a, a dry well, a flow well. But, you know, if you're trying to pick up a huge area of a backyard and put it into a dry well, I don't believe it's going to work. Um, and there may be a lot of comments, but I would prefer to see something be gravity. Um, this is gravity over to a sump basin, and the sump basin is going to be lifting that up and pumping it to daylight. So it's, it's a mini lift station is what it is. But let's go ahead and keep installing. We've got, you know, hooked up his section of the SDR 35. We'll continue that on around, around that corner with a 45 and on over to the sump basin. Okay, so I went ahead and excavated the basin hole deeper so that we can get it, you know, a good, we're gonna use an M98. And you can see that groundwater trying to come up in here. I mean, it's just right there. So the existing uh, inlet that he had actually works out real good for the driveway, which is here. But if you notice how deep that line is going back, um, that's coming from the old dry well. So, we're we'll going to have to drill a new hole down in here somewhere to let the inlet come in. And we've got plenty of room for the water to uh, accumulate for that pump to be able to take it out of here, no problem. We're going to use a M98, a Zoller M98, and we're going to put a discharge line out. And it'll tie into his existing uh, downspout drain, which is out front, and drain all the way out to the so again, a great project for the do-it-yourselfer. Um, I'm just helping out a friend, and I'm not really charging him anything. <laughs> and you notice I'm out here all by myself too, but um, it's all good. He's done a lot of things for me in the past as well. Um, you know, French drains, those kind of things, I think they all work great. It's basically two parts of any system, no matter what they are. There's gonna be the collection of the water, whether that be a, a roof, which is collecting water, downspouts bring it down, and you're gonna have a discharge. It could be a French drain, it could be a catch basin, that's the collection, but you've gotta have a discharge for this water. If you don't, you're not gonna have any results at all. So, I mean, a, a crawl space, you know, you're collecting water inside the crawl space, you send it to the pump, the pump lifts it up and sends it out. So you've got collection of the footer tile and the sump pump is your discharge sending it out. Basement, same thing. It's all about collection of water and then second, discharge. Okay, so even though I ran the trencher, that low spot is low. And what you're gonna need if you use a trencher is you're gonna need this little shovel like this. We're gonna come back, we're gonna take this down about six more inches so that we maintain that fall from that low spot over to the catch basin. Real simple, use your body weight, just pick it up and pull it out. Probably just need one pass, but it takes a little bit. You can see it comes right out nice and quick. And I am hitting the groundwater. <laughs> I have to keep telling you about that groundwater because that's what the problem here is, is that we're trying to move a whole lot of groundwater. So we're pretty deep, but it's coming right out. And we're almost there. That should do it. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, <clears throat> from over here by the sump basin, you can look down the line and see that it's got plenty of fall coming towards me. That's what we need. So there's a lot of questions about how much fall, you know, whenever you're in doubt, you can see, <clears throat> I ran the water into the catch basin, you can see the water coming out the pipe. It works great. You can always just run some water <laughs> and make sure you have good fall. Here's the catch basin. And you notice the water's not coming back into the basin. It stays right at the bottom of the outlet. And SDR 35, a little bit of PVC. And then we switched over to corrugated because it's well out of the way of the driveway. But it's flowing all the way down and going right over to the sump basin. Okay, so let's test the system. I went ahead and um, put the garden hose in here. Not a lot of pressure, but shouldn't take long. This water should start coming out. Let's go over it. Remember there was a dry well here. We pulled that out and we ran some SDR 35. That's that green pipe. <clears throat> um, then we went to the PVC, but um, he's gonna make this a driveway. So we went ahead and ran the SDR 35. And then we've got thin wall PVC, which is 3000 pound crush. 
it's down about two feet and it comes all the way over to the sump basin sorry it comes all the way over to the sump basin and yeah I can hear that water yep you can see it starting to trickle out everything works great yeah this is great um, all that water from the catch basin you can see it just comes pouring over here um, it's going to pick up the yard drain that was working really well he has yard drains that went into the dry well that water came to that point from the French drains it came in really well it just couldn't discharge remember you've got collection and you've got discharge so now we've got great collection and this sump pump is now the discharge looking really good let's go see if it's backing up at all pretty sure we have really good fall all the way back you know coming to the sump basin and the way you can tell is you can see the sump basin or the catch basin here water's you know going in and you don't you don't see it going back through the inlet line so it's you know that's french drain going coming into the catch basin and that water is just draining out so you know you've got really good fall okay so that was a pretty good day's work for one person you know when you do it yourself i mean all by yourself like this take your time don't skimp try to get as good a fall as you can those kind of things you know just normal stuff and I promise you that you're going to do it. It's going to make a major difference in your drainage, especially if you've got a major problem. And of course, I've got hundreds of videos up there. Take a look. It'll cover any aspect of what you're doing. And sorry, I'm sweating and tired, but <laughs> that's all part of a day's work. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Okay, so it did rain um, yesterday afternoon pretty hard. I went ahead and started to cover before the rain, and it worked great. You know, all the water was collected here, and you can see the drain line runs down through here, and it all went over here to the sump basin, and of course the temporary pump just lifted it up and sent it right out. Everything works really good. Today, we are going to go ahead and do this line, which is a line that runs over here to the driveway. Notice I've just got a piece of uh, SDR 35 down there because he is going to turn this section where we're standing into a driveway back to the RV. And so over here in the driveway, we're going to go ahead and put um, another catch basin. We'll probably run some French drain down through here um, using gravel perforated pipe. Um, and we might try some easy flow, but because he's going to run big vehicles over here, more than likely we're going to use gravel perforated pipe through the section. Let's go ahead and get started. When you're working by yourself, try to you know, think about utilizing your manpower and your um, energy. So the question here would be, should I go ahead and cover this up, finish covering, or should I go ahead and lay more pipe? I like to go ahead and get more pipe laid um, so that it's you cover it all up at once so we're going to go ahead and start by trenching this line out right right below my feet here um, just to make sure we're at the proper depth and hook up the catch basin over by the driveway out there and then we'll go ahead and um, plumb it all together put this discharge underground so that it ties into its downspout drain and then we'll cover but that's up to you um, again when you're by yourself, it's important to utilize your energy. So while I started to excavate, I found some old French drains that appear to be working pretty well. Um, there's no gravel or anything around them, but it's still, they're working really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring those over and put a T on our line here, just to hook them up. I'm not sure where they run, but you know, we're going to go ahead and hook that up. I also found out here at the driveway a catch basin that was buried. And I'm going to run some water in there in just a second to see where it goes. But I'll bet you that it runs over to those French drains over here. And probably just runs out to the, you know, into the ground. But we're going to hook that up to the new pump. So here's that drain I found in the driveway. I've got the garden hose running in the air and yeah it does come across right over to here and you can see see that water coming out right there it's coming out really well so it's worth hooking up and again this is a French drain that um, 
really didn't have any gravel it just had some fabric around it and you can see it works great um try to i'll, I'll put a post a little bit about french drains again uh, so much hype about fabric and gravel and how long do they last but i'll put that up there for you too okay so i went ahead and adapted the yard drain which is corrugated we're going to come back to PVC and we've got our T over here where it's leading over to the sump basin over there. And you can see that piece of SDR 35, you know, you could actually use a ruler, but um, if you just think about cutting this pipe, we need to come to the inside of each coupling right here. So lay out your pipe so that it's, you know, right above those fittings and go ahead and make a mark. If you're not sure, cut it long because you can, you, if it's short, you'll have to cut it again. But if it's long, at least you can fit it back into the area without any problem. So I made the cut and you can see um, it's right at both couplings. Remember that you do have a little play, you know, you can move things around to put it together. But again, if you're in doubt, always cut your pipe a little bit longer so that you can come back and shorten it. If you cut it short, <clears throat> you can't fit it. So my advice to you know anybody, and even my guys, is you know cut that thing a little bit long, you can always make it shorter. So the same thing when you're making this measurement, the SDR35 comes with a bell built into it. So if you look carefully, you can see maybe <laughs> the other pipe. I'm just laying that on so I know that we're at the bottom of that coupling. And you come down here, sorry I'm crawling around here, and we're gonna just use our finger. So I just use my hacksaw to give it a score. And then I can pull this pipe out of here and just cut it real simply. Piece of cake. Because SDR has got that bell on it, um, it is a little di more difficult than you think to put it together. Usually what I do is just spit on the pipe down there so it gets lubricated. And then um, go ahead and take your foot and kick the heck out of it. So the camera's going to bounce around a little bit, but oh yeah, it just slid right together. So yeah, lubricate that fitting a little bit right there and it'll slide together much better. Okay, so now we're going to attach the SDR35 to the sump basin. I thought we could use this hole, but we'll have to patch that up. I've got some really good PVC tape, um, watertight, that'll seal that up. So we're actually down, you know, a little deeper. And this is a four and an eighth inch, um, excuse me, four and a half inch hole saw. We're just gonna go ahead and drill it through. <laughs> simple <laughs> even did that with one hand but so now we're just gonna go ahead and use a, a 22 and a half degree turn to bring that over and then it'll come right into the basin and you can see if we look through this hole you know here's the, the new inlet and there's the inlet from sorry there's the inlet from the uh, old yard drains and stuff in the backyard coming all the way over to the pit. Again, the M98 is a half horsepower pump. It's gonna pump between 60 and 90 gallons a minute. That's three trash cans full of water a minute. And it should keep up with this, no problem. Of course, you can never beat mother nature, but wow, this pump can really move some water. So real quick, let me talk about no hubs and 90s. We'll start with a no hub. You see me use these things all the time and they work really good. There's a couple different kinds, but this one I like for, for the sump pump discharge. If your trench is not perfectly straight, you know, one side slides in, the other side slides in here, tighten it up, five sixteenths inch nut driver. And, but what it'll do is it'll allow you to just a little bit offset, I'm exaggerating, but a little bit, you know, give that a little bit of bend in the pipe that you need. This coupling is actually the same thing, but it's much stronger. It won't give you as much bend um, as the larger rubber one. This has a rubber no hub inside it as well, um, but it also has this stainless steel band around it. And use these um, for plumbing. So if you have a waistline, an inch and a half 
you know, drain line maybe from a kitchen sink or a tub line. This was a, that works great for that too. So this works the same and it does pass code for that. But again, we are doing rainwater drainage, much different than sewer and drain. So now let's talk about these 90s. And there's three different kinds here. <laughs> this is a standard uh, sweeping 90, you can see it. I use that one most all the time. This one you can see is a little bit more square. This is called a vent 90. And these are made to go uh, through studs inside the house. Again, more plumbing, DW, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> but it's more plumbing than it is for rainwater drainage. And again, a, a larger sweeping 90. Um, again, more for plumbing to give you a good flow. I am going to use this one today because out of that sump basin, we are going to pump that water a good distance. And even though there's very little restriction here, there's even less restriction in this. This one, you can see it would have a lot of restriction. It's not really made to run water through. It's made for the air vent. Everything in the house, you know, whether it be the toilet, sink, tub, lavatory, they all have vents on them. Without the vent, it would just gurgle. So that's what that's for. But let's go ahead and hook this up. Hopefully there was a little bit of information for you and you can put it to good use. Okay, quick review of everything and then we're going to cover this up. We've got two inlet lines coming in here. You can see them down there. We've got that PVC one that's coming from the old yard drain. And then we've got a new line coming from the driveway drain. I ended up using a piece of corrugated here uh, just to get it tied into the pit. I really like how the corrugated, you've seen me slice that pipe, pull it in, and then it expands. It really makes a very tight seal where no dirt gets in. So anyways, we've got our Zoller M98 down here at the bottom. And we've got a riser coming up to the check valve. The check valve allows that water to flow only one direction. Another riser up to a 90. And then we drilled through the side of the pit right here. It comes out. We're using the same trench that we excavated so we don't have to do any more excavation. Um, came out with a 45. This is all glued up now. So you can see the old SDR 35 underneath of that or the new SDR 35 <laughs> comes over. And remember me talking about the larger sweep 90? So we put that 90 here just to help a better flow come through. Comes across. And over here, we're actually connecting to an old, his existing uh, line that he had in here. Um, so we ended up using the no hub. And see how it kind of helps it when it's offset? Just enough to attach to a, an existing line um, and or maybe you just need to have just that little bit of play and it works great. So now we're ready to cover this all up and put our finishing touches on there and we'll plug it in and see how it does. So yeah, it's kind of bright out here, but you can see I backfilled the area. Now we're just running some water just to show you, but we put the garden hose in here and I'm gonna put the grate back on and pour some gravel around this area kind of grate it off a little bit so it's nice and firm it may settle a little bit but it's already a natural low spot perfect place for a catch basin remember catch basins pick up immediate surface water runoff so as water comes across the ground it just drops into your basin as long as you've got a good discharge it's going to work great the sump pump is our discharge the catch basin and the French drains, which are back here in the yard, that is the collection. One other quick note, um, I want you to just listen down here. Tell me if you can hear that garden hose running. You should hear the uh, hose back there. So you can hear that hose running back there. That tells you that you've got really good fall and that water is just coming out slowly because he doesn't have a lot of pressure. But that's a good telltale sign that your line's running downhill. If that sound disappeared, you would not hear that water run, which tells you you've got a belly in the line. So out here in the driveway, remember I found the an old drain, which worked fine, um, but it just, you know, totally buried. <laughs> um, so we now he has two drains, you know, both four inch pipes. Well, that one's actually three inch, believe it or not, but it works great. Um, lots of collection of water from the driveway at this low spot. If you can see how it grades into the area, just put a little gravel around it. Um, 
he'll have to do some more work as he finishes. I'm not sure if he's gonna pave it or what they're gonna to do to this driveway, but this is perfect collection right here. Line comes across. Remember, this is SDR 35. We tied in that drain that I found right here. It all comes over to the sump basin. The sump pump lifts it up. We came back through the same trench, some of it, um, to save on, the, on, on my excavation, and came over and we tied into his existing line right here. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. So the French drain, you know, there's so many videos out there now about how to install a French drain. And everybody has this big controversy over fabric. And does it work? Do we need it? Uh, what's the best fabric? You know, every application is different. I've got over 600 videos out there to show you how to install a French drain. Whether you use the, the peanut pipe, you know, the easy flow with the 4 inch corrugated surrounded by styrofoam peanuts, whether you use perforated pipes surrounded by gravel, whether you use this new thing called hydroblocks, everything you're going to do is going to help solve your problem. How long will it last? Nobody really knows. Um, Certain fabrics allow water to come in quickly, other fabrics allow, allow it to come in slowly. But regardless, I, I believe the life of a French drain is about 15 to 20 years, no matter what. Um, in clay soils, the fabric, I feel, is not as needed as it is in a sandy soil. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter. I, I truly believe that if you do this properly with the right amount of materials, you're going to solve your problem. And all of those companies that want to knock another company, beware of, because that's really not the greatest people you want to be with. Um, I think, again, there's tons of videos out there, not just mine, but so many out there, so much information. Thank you, Google.